don't need an introduction, do you? I don't think so. But Pastor Sandra is a spiritual mother to this <laughs> congregation, and we are so grateful for you. <laughs> Lord, I pray that you would speak through Sandra as she speaks to us. Lord, use her voice. Use her words. Most of all, Lord, use her heart mm -hmm. and convey to us your heart. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Well, Pastor Joel, if you get stumped on one of those hot topics and you're going to call somebody, don't call me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get that out of the way right now. <laughs> yeah, maybe it depends on what topic it is. But if you're stumped, yeah, I don't know about that. Wow. <clears throat> You know, there's, um, there's all kinds of moms, and it's already been, you know, alluded to that, but um, moms, grandmoms, great-grandmoms, stepmoms, and I've been all of those. I've been all of those. But the one that I can't say I'm enjoying the most, because some of my uh, great-grandchildren and grandchildren are going to probably watch the live stream, but <laughs> the one I'm in now, let me put it that way, not necessarily enjoying the most, is being a spiritual mom. Um, we have so many spiritual children, and that is such, such a blessing, such a blessing. It's, it, it feels like a, a reward that I'm getting early, and I didn't have to wait till heaven to get any rewards. I mean, it's a reward, it's an honor when somebody uh, calls you mom. So, you don't have to have children to be a spiritual mom. No matter what stage of life you're in, no matter what the situation, we need spiritual moms. We need the older women teaching the younger. So, it's an honor uh, to be asked to speak here. John and I go to all the network churches, and that's so much fun. Uh, I love the time of life we're in, it's exciting. Uh, I love visiting all the churches because we always see people in every church that we've known since the beginning. It, it's really pretty amazing, so that's a fun thing. But it's really special to come back to home base, to come back to home base and feel the blessing here. So thank you, thank you for that. Uh, love seeing everybody. Well, it's not a big secret that today uh, there's going to be many sermons, um, at least probably in the, in the United States, on the Proverbs 31 woman and, um, and about, about her inner beauty and all of that. And I'm going to go a little bit different direction than that. Um, but, but staying with tradition, okay, just for a moment, I'm going to give you some fun, but... Um, it's not trivia, it's facts, but fun, but hopefully meaningful information. So, how many here, and I think there's a pretty good chance, except for maybe a few, are old enough to remember Audrey Hepburn? <laughs> yeah. yeah, not sure, right? No, 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 I'm sure. <laughs> Google it, okay. <laughs> but yeah, Audrey Hepburn. Uh, now, she was 1929 to 1993, and she was a British actress and really a female legend. Um, get this. She was inducted into the International uh, Best Dressed Hall of Fame. I didn't know there was such a thing. There is a Hall of Fame for everything these days, and she's in the Best Dressed Hall of Fame. She was a very, very classy, classy lady. Okay, now, as you know from Proverbs 31 and every sermon you've ever heard, the beauty of a woman is not in the clothes she wears. It's not in her makeup, it's not in her hair, um, but, and I, I talked with one of the brothers about this before service today, really, and he was confirming, it's, now he said it a little bit differently, but it's in her eyes. Her beauty is in her eyes because that is the door to her heart, to a woman's heart, to a person's heart. 
It's in her eyes. It's the source of her love. Now, and that beauty, it, you know, yes, we grow, but that beauty also grows over the years, and it intensifies. And so I'm going to, this list that I'm going to give you about some of her beautiful traits, um, hopefully I'm going to give it, it's a little twist, and I got this from the article on Audrey Hepburn, so I didn't make this up. But hopefully it'll show you a different kind of beauty. One, she had very attractive lips. Now that sounds silly, but you know, I always look at lips. For some reason, that's something I think it's really cool to have attractive lips. Well, this article said if you want to have attractive lips, speak kind words. <laughs> speak kind words. She had a very loving look. Well, if you want to have a loving look, look for the good side of people. Uh, there's a verse in Romans, I think it's, oh, well, I'm not even going to take a shot in the dark. It's around Romans 4, 17, maybe somewhere in there. But it says to, um, to see as though they were. So if I'm going to look for the good side of people, I need to see the way God sees them. I need to to see as though uh, the vision of what God has for them, not necessarily what I see in the moment. If, oh, here's one, oh, weight. Oh, women are always talking about their weight. Weight is always a big issue. Well, if you want to not worry about your weight, the article said, share your food with the hungry. <laughs> That'll solve that. Beautiful hair. She, Audrey Hepburn, definitely had beautiful hair. And I love this. Let a child play with your hair. Just let a child run their fingers through your hair. You know, or even if you, even somebody older. I, I love, you know, when I get to go to hair, or get a massage, and they just oh, work through my hair. And, you know, you want beautiful hair? Let a child play with your hair once a day. She had a beautiful poise and walk. She was very elegant. Well, I probably shouldn't say this, but many, 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 many years ago, I went to a modeling and charm school, and they taught you how to walk, how to sit, how to stand. They taught you all that in order to walk with this poise that Audrey Hepburn had. And you know, it's so much easier when we walk with Jesus and we know we're not alone then we're going to walk with a confidence and a, as to who we are, and we're going to feel secure and, um, and safe because we're not walking alone. So, you know, it's just kind of a, I didn't want to ignore the Proverbs 31 concept, so there's a little bit about Audrey Hepburn. So now you want to go home, and you're going to Google and check, check out who this person is. All right, there's other qualities I want to look at, though, that I feel are very, very needed in a woman and in a man. And these qualities, there's four, these qualities I feel are primary for us to finish well. And the older I get, the more I think about, I want to finish well. I want to finish well. You know, I, and it's not just age, but we've known, uh, we've been to many, many funerals, some very close friends. And I, I've told a lot of young people that, and even mothers and grandmothers, I said, you're never done teaching. And it's not just your children, it's your spiritual children, it's the church, it's people watching you. You're never done training others. Never finish being an example. The way we die, as we finish well, we are teaching other people. We are teaching other people till that last breath. These four state, um, qualities I want to share with you are courage, faith, steadfast, and truth. I think they're the qualities that are really important to finish well. Um, I came across the 
uh, the title, actually, when they needed a title. It was more than enough. And I got it from Exodus 36, 6 to 7. And in this scripture, the people were asked to give items, bring your items, bring your jewelry, bring everything you have, your fabric, in order to build the holy tent, okay? They gave so much that the people told them to stop because they had more than enough. They had more than enough. Now, can you imagine if uh, they ask you here, just this body right here, and we, they needed items, maybe for Genesis or for whatever, or for the Bible school or whatever, and they say, bring this stuff. There's always lists back there. Bring. What if the church had to say, we have so much. Don't sign up anymore. We have more than enough. Stop bringing your things to the church. Well, that's what they told the people. Can you imagine, I can't, telling God, I have enough? Well, truthfully, I don't know about you, but I feel I have more than I ever deserved. When, when John and I said yes to the Lord and we were born again, and I knew my name was written in the Lamb's Book of Life, at that moment, I had more than enough, more than I ever, ever deserved. And everything God has done for me since then is just the spillover. It's the more. It's the more. So truthfully, yeah, we, we have far more than we ever deserved. And then the other side is we can't outgive God. We can't outgive God. He keeps pouring into us. So we need to, as God pours into you, and he gives you the more than enough, you need to be giving to others, not just family, but friends, everybody you see, the homeless on the street. If you can, sometimes you can give some. But because the more you give, you, you're emptying this vessel, this cup, and then God puts more in. He doesn't want it just spilling over on the ground. He wants you to pour into other people and then he's going to pour more into you. Your cup will never be empty. It'll never be empty. So if we ask for it, I believe he'll fill us with the courage, the faith, the steadfastness, and the truth, because he loves to give good gifts to his children. Ask for it. Now, Hebrews 11, which we're all familiar with, is a list of people, and they're known for their faith. That's the faith chapter. And amazing, amazing stories. And yet, it says in there that they, yet, they didn't receive fully what God had, pro had promised them. They walked in faith, went uh, tremendous things, but they never fully received what God promised. But they walked in faith in spite of the outcome in spite of the outcome. Why did they do that? I believe it's because their faith was in that which was beyond and greater than their present circumstances. That's where their faith was. To see as though it were. Their faith was beyond what they could see or even their worldview. Now that's a big deal right now. Our worldview doesn't look real good. We, we know the last chapter. We know how it ends. But we need to be people that walk in faith regardless of the circumstances, regardless of what's happening in the world. The darker the world, the more, the more we must live by faith. That light has to shine, and it shines bright in darkness. There's a... We have... We have five children, we have 18 grandchildren, we have 18 great-grandchildren. And they're, they're not all where I would like to see them. They, they're not all at that level of faith where uh, I'd say, oh, I can rest now. I don't even have to pray for them anymore. They're really good. I, I want more for all of them. And, and the little ones, the great-grandchildren, I don't know if I'll be around that long to see that. But my level of faith is such that, and I learned this from my spiritual mother, that if I don't see it, 
it's okay because I know God's going to complete the work he started. And so I'm not going to be concerned about dying in this distress that my, uh, my family's not all where they should be spiritually because my prayers will continue from heaven and I believe God's going to complete the work. Amen. And I'm, I don't have to fear that. So that's my level of faith. Now, and oh my goodness, I, I asked Pastor Joel and Vicki this week about how to pronounce some words, and now Jill's here, and she knows how to pronounce all these words, so I'm going to crucify them, but here we go. The word for faith uh, is emuna, E-M-U-N-A-H, emuna. emuna, okay, there we go, thanks. Okay, that's the Hebrew word for faith. It's also the word interestingly enough, for steadfastness. And both words are connected to the Hebrew word for truth. Now, there's three of the qualities that I was telling you are important for us. I love how that all comes together. That's, that's a package deal. That's a package deal. My, my faith, my steadfastness, and my truth. And so that's, that's a deal that I want. I want that. Faith gives you the power to become steadfast and unshakable in and for the truth. Are you here? Faith. That's why that faith is so important. Whether you see it or not, faith will give you the power to become steadfast, firm, standing on the truth, and unshakable for the truth. That is more than enough to handle life. If we can grasp that, it's more than enough to handle life. You know, you don't hear the word steadfast that often, but last night um, I was watching an old movie. You probably won't know this name either. I don't know. <laughs> Bing Crosby was in it. Uh, oh, you know that one. Okay. <laughs> she didn't know Audrey Hepburn, but she, you know. What was the movie? <laughs> Country Girl. Yeah, country girl. So I'm watching this old movie, and this guy is complimenting this woman and wanting to say all nice things and, you know, entice her and all that. And he calls her steadfast. I thought, whoa, I don't think you'd hear that in any modern movies today, you know. But the compliment he gave her was, you are so steadfast. So... Courage. When we have the first three, the faith, steadfast, and truth, now we need courage. We need courage. When you have the first three, you can walk in courage. But you've got to have those three first. Um, and we need to be courageous. Mm. So, now let me... <laughs> Maybe let me give you one um, kind of exception clause here. Courage is not the absence of fear, okay? It is not the absence of fear. People do very courageous things and are very fearful. That's okay. Don't let fear ever stop you from being courageous. We need to practice courage. Anybody want to come up here and read my notes and finish the message? That would be very courageous, wouldn't it? Okay. We need to practice courage, and we need to practice it by pressing in to the areas that are hard and uncomfortable. We need to press into them. The things that are out of your comfort zone. Think, there's no way I'm doing that. There's no way I'm doing this. No, nope, that's not my gift. I can't do this. I can't do that. Oh, no. God wants to pour courage into you and help you to press in to do those difficult things. Uh, life is difficult. Uh, raising kids is difficult. It's different every day. And you need courage to be able to handle some of the things that are going to come your way. Um, cancer was difficult. Every day was difficult. I needed courage. I needed faith. I needed to be steadfast. I needed to stand in the truth to continue. 
Is it possible that because of our own self-talk, I believe we instill fear into our own minds more than maybe sometimes it's actually there? And that'll hold us back from what God wants us to do and how he wants to use you in, in your life. There's so much he wants to do with your life. And fear is holding you back. Well, um, yesterday, two big changes we heard about in our family. Two big changes. And we need to press into that. You know, it can be fearful. Change is uncomfortable for a lot of people. But it's life. Things are always changing. Things are always moving. And we got to be ready for it with these four qualities. Okay, where does the fear come from? Well, like I said, some of it can come from your own self-talk. But this is a story that a friend sent me. I confess, it was on Facebook. Um, I, I do kind of hang out on Facebook a little bit because this is where I get all the information about my family information I wouldn't normally get, so I do that. But a friend sent me this story, and I just love it. Okay, if you put, and if you heard it, just smile. But anyway, if you put 100 black ants and you put 100 red ants in a jar, I should have brought an object lesson. Not that I'd have brought ants, but maybe I could use something else. But anyway, you put all these ants in a jar, and nothing will happen. They're, they're just fine. If I shake the jar, then the black ants think the red ants are the enemy, and the red ants think the black ants are the enemy, and they start killing each other. They start killing each other because they're bumping into each other, they're hurting each other, and they think each other is the enemy. The true enemy is the one shaking the jar. Does that make sense? Are you getting it? Okay. The true enemy is the one shaking the jar. And I believe the same thing happens in our own human society. So before we attack each other, let's keep in mind and think about who's shaking the jar. It's, um, <laughs> this, this is something, I think it's going to become one of my my phrases, the other day in the car, John and I were having a conversation and we didn't quite agree on, and uh, I turned to him and I said, who's shaking the jar right now? <laughs> okay, who's shaking the jar? So, you know, feel free to use that and realize what's happening here. But he is more than enough. God is more than enough. So trust him to help you to do the hard things and never forget who is shaking the jar. Trust him to do the hard things. Now, I want to give you some examples of some really ordinary women who did courageous things and changed history. Plus, they got their name in the book. And I'm not talking about the life book, but I'm talking about the Bible that we read. I, tell you, I think that's pretty awesome when you see an ordinary person's name in the Bible. That is pretty amazing to me. So, I'm not going to go through a lot, but there's so many of them. In Judges 5.24, uh, the scripture says, May A-L, or J-L, or A-L, uh, be blessed above all women who live in tents. She was a common woman, a common woman. She lived in a tent. But she was brave enough to kill a warrior leader by driving a tent peg, you know, through his head. She just used what was available. She just used what was available. Oh, I got a rolling pin. Okay, I've got a spatula. I got whatever. But she got the job done. This ordinary woman. Uh, judges 4, of course, we have Deborah, uh, a judge and a prophetess of Israel, and one who went into battle because the leader said he wouldn't go without her. I mean, these women, keep in mind, were no different than you and me. They really weren't, but they were courageous, they were steadfast, they had faith, they had truth. Second Samuel 17, a servant girl would risk her life 
to get messages to Jonathan to give to David. Also in that same chapter, a man's wife, doesn't even say her name, risked hiding Jonathan and his friend, Ahamnas, <laughs> and then lied to the pursuers. Now, I thought, this woman's name's not even mentioned, but anyway, she's hiding them, and then the pursuers come. Now, think about this for just a moment. These pursuers were probably on horses. They probably had all kinds of gear on. Um, it, it looked like the SWAT team coming. The SWAT team is above just policemen. They've got the armor on, they've got the gear, they've got a light up here, they've got all this equipment on them. So it's like the SWAT team is barging into your house. And here you are, the little lady of the house, five foot two, 110 pounds, you're just a little spitting of a thing. And this pursuers come in and you're brave enough to lie to them, to protect something that you believe in, the truth. 2 Samuel 20, 16 to 22, a wise woman, again, stopped Joab from destroying a whole city by calling a town meeting, she had a voice, and convinced them to cut off the head of Sheba and throw it over the wall to Joab, and then his army left and the city was saved. I know a woman, I know a woman like this in uh, the Telford area who called a town meeting and changed the history of that area. Recently, this is just recently she's doing this. We can be courageous, we can have a voice, we can change history. 2 Samuel 21.10, uh, a woman by the name of Rispa had seven sons. They were all killed. And she stayed with their bodies for a very long time, it doesn't say how long, a long time, protecting them from birds and wild animals. Can you imagine seven sons? They're laying there, they all died, and yet you're gonna protect their bodies the kind of love you had for them. David heard about her and buried the bodies because she was steadfast in what she was doing. Um, this morning, it, it was interesting. I, I was up very early today. God just got me up and tweaking some things here and giving me some other ideas. And so, um, so while I was up, I, I read what I normally read in my, my Bible reading. And then I thought, wow, this is really good. I read in 2 Kings 5 uh, about Naaman. And it just says about the little girl. It's just a little girl. I don't know what that means. I don't know how old she was. She was a little girl, but she was taken captive. And uh, she was, uh, uh, in essence, a, a slave, a servant. And uh, she just made a suggestion to Naaman's wife, just a suggestion, you know? He could be healed if he went to the prophet, and it happened. But the irony was this morning, this is how God was in this, and I, it just confirms in me that God wants you to get this message. I thought, wow, I should share that one too. There's so many when you read through the scripture about ordinary people, men and women who did courageous things so I thought, now what chapter was that? Well, I had my daily reading, and I thought, well, I'll find it easy. I looked, it wasn't there. I said, I just read it, it has to be here. Well, I read the wrong, I was reading in 2 Kings instead of 1 Kings. I was supposed to read 1 Kings, but I ended up reading 2 Kings. You can decide if that was a God moment or not. But I believe those little things are just that he wants to give you that message. You know, approaching the king in uh, the Old Testament was, uh, was, very, was very dangerous. We know with Esther, uh, if he didn't call for her, she could have lost her life. Well, there's another story, too. Uh, it was a very brave, brave thing to approach the king, even if the king was your own son. But I want to read how this son, Solomon, honored his mother. 
So if my sons listen to this, I don't expect it. <laughs> 1 Kings 2.19. So Bathsheba went to King Solomon to talk to him for a, a, a Adonijah, what's his name? A-D-O-N-I-J-A-H. I don't know, that's what I thought. Yeah, okay. Anyway, she wanted to talk to him uh, for, for his benefit. When Solomon saw her, now he's the king. When Solomon saw her, he stood up. That was a big deal right there. He stood up to meet her. Then he bowed down to her. He bowed to her, and then he sat on his throne. And then he told the servants to bring another throne for my mother. Bring another throne for my mother. And you know what? He sat her down at his right side. That's the side of authority. Wow. Now, if you have kids, don't go reading this scripture to them and say, this is what I expect. At least you could do some of it. He can't do it all. But the list goes on. It goes on. Uh, Rahab, Mary, the mother of Jesus, Pontany, who was the woman at the well and who saved the whole town. And of course, like I mentioned, Queen Esther uh, and also Abigail, who pleaded for her selfish husband's life to David, King David, again, warriors on horses, and she's coming with her baskets of food, you know, and saving her selfish husband. Very brave. Definitely, all of these people were out of their comfort zone. You cannot use the excuse that this is not in my comfort zone. This is not what I do. God wants to do so much more with each life, each life. Wow. It's so important. You have value, you have purpose, and God, and that's, that's why I like with Elijah House, we get training, we, we learn, because what, what you're putting into yourself, then God can take it out and bless other people and, and use you in the building of the kingdom. Okay, now, here's a quote that uh, I, I just love, and we can put that up. The quote is this, when we are guided by the living truth, Jesus, and we choose to be steadfast in our convictions, we can have faith in what we don't see and courage to do hard things. The Holy Spirit lives in us to make this possible because he is more than enough. And you need to Take a picture of that, write it down, but dissect it. Look at it carefully. Look at those words. We're guided by Jesus. We make a choice to be steadfast and not waver in our convictions. And then we can have faith to do those hard things, to do those hard things that God is calling us to do. To do all of this, we need God's guidance. And this is something else I just came across, which I thought was so cool. The word guidance, if we made it a capital G, it would be God, you, and I dance. That's the word guidance. God, you, and I dance. Wow. He leads, I surrender. He leads, I surrender. Now, do you want to be... Do you want to be a brave woman of God? Do you want to be a brave man of God? Maybe you don't want to be. Nope, price is too high. I really, really, really like my comfort zone. I don't like doing hard things. I don't like speaking up when I could get a lot of repercussions. I like my comfort zone. But if you want to be a brave man or woman of God, then I want you to come forward. And I want you to, to just to kneel here, stand here, but experience a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit. We all need a fresh filling every day. The, your baptism in the Spirit, it happened one time. 
but if you aren't filled every day if you aren't asking for that filling to fill my cup up every day because I don't know about you but I leak that all leaks out and I want a fresh filling of the Holy Spirit every day our world needs our world needs the army of God that's you to be equipped and ready for service in these latter days there is going to be jobs for all of us to do in the latter day and we've got to be people of courage courage steadfast with a strong faith in the truth in the truth and not some popular theology I know I know there are people watching at home that are going through really hard times right now and I know there's big changes coming in your life I know there's people watching at home that have illnesses and feel so incapacitated like there's so little they can do but God wants you to reach out and be filled too he wants you to be courageous because there are things you can do he is more than enough but I want all all that he wants to give me so I can better serve in the building of the kingdom of God if there's more I want it and that's what I want you to ask for today ask for it recommitting to following Jesus because he's more than enough now for some of you that didn't come forward you know you have a purpose you can be courageous and if you know somebody up here you can come up and pray for them your prayers are worthy they, they count you can come stand behind some of these brothers and sisters just put out your hand and pray that the Holy Spirit fills them fills their cup you can do that you're all vessels of importance to pray for people and ask the Holy Spirit to fill them just to fill them your prayers count they count he's more than enough he's more than enough Holy Spirit pour into these my precious family this is my family my brothers and sisters Lord pour into them fill their cup Lord fill their cup I pray that you fill them up so much with the qualities of the Holy Spirit the qualities of the character of God that they can do hard things and Lord let their cups spill over into other people that as they leave today and the first person they see it, it, it's going to be spilled on it's going to be dripped on and it's going to be Holy Spirit helping on other people because your cup is overflowing so fill them Lord fill them each one fill them with a fresh baptism 